Well, 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 today we are so lucky to have Amy Noble Messing joining us. Amy is a holistic dating coach and best-selling co-author of four books, all designed to empower and inspire women at various stages of their lives. Love Amy is her coaching business that marries the technology of modern dating with a holistic view of human to human energy and connection. Welcome to the show. We're so excited to have you. Thank you so much. That was the loveliest intro. <laughs> no, truly. Really, thank you so much for coming on. So I first heard you on, you know, chatting with the one and only Gwyneth Paltrow. Okay. <laughs> and I thought maybe she'll talk to two low rent, you know, uh, versions. <laughs> Gwyneth Paltrow wannabes. Yeah, exactly. Oh my exactly. God, I love you guys. Are you kidding? I'm so happy to talk to you. Oh my gosh, you're so nice to come on. But I feel like dating is truly so hard. Mm -hmm. And we make a lot of mistakes while doing it. And I think that when I was listening to you talking on her podcast, you had a lot of really actionable, grounded advice. And I feel like a lot of times if you're looking for dating advice on TikTok or YouTube, as a guy, you'll get a lot of like pickup artist tips, toxic mm -hmm. tips like that. Like yeah. I, I once was uh, had a friend and on his bookshelf was a book called How to Date Models. And it was all about Yikes. the pickup no. artist ways. <laughs> That's the worst. <laughs> And then I also feel like as a woman looking for tips, you'll hear a lot about how you should only order like the fish and the white wine. Oh <laughs> that literally Yum. makes me break out in hives. <laughs> no, truly, I saw a TikTok saying this so that you can seem as feminine as possible to attract a high value man. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> and your tips were distinctly otherwise, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. And also rang really true to me. And so anyway, I just think what you're doing is so valuable. I'm so happy you're here. So thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much, both of you. And I, I feel super lucky to be doing what I'm doing. And, you know, I made all the mistakes in dating. I was married for 20 years. I was spit out into the dating world in New York City. And I just got married a year ago to the love of my life. And I had to navigate it too. And now, I mean, there's so much press right now about how hard dating is, mm -hmm. sort of fueling the negativity, mm -hmm. but I get it. Like the other day I was in Starbucks with a client and there were three cute guys at the table we were sitting at. And like, it was so hard to figure out how to organically talk to them. Mm. Like everyone's on their computer. Finally, I was like, just tell them your phone's about to die. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And like, get, get the plug. So it's tough. And I think also... Women right now in this culture are such high achievers. They're so amazing. And this is the one aspect they feel really lost. Mm. And, it, and it makes them feel bad. Yes. Like everyone comes to me and, and they say the same thing. Because I work with mostly women. And they just say like, all right, I'm broken. Mm -hmm. Something's wrong with me. Please help me fix me. Yeah. And my answer is like, nothing's wrong with you at all. It's just we've never been taught how to be intentional about this part yeah. of our lives. Yeah. Which is crazy to me like that in financial wellness but I can't help you there <laughs> those two areas I also feel like at least from my personal experience we're not really taught to show up authentically as ourselves we're taught to try to like fulfill a specific role yeah. or like archetype that a man will be attracted mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. yes and that a lot of times becomes really unattractive to guys they don't actually want that they're interested in meeting a real person. Yeah. Right, with views, who's strong, who's yeah. badass. I see it all the time in the profiles that I, you know, I'll first review someone's profile when we're working together, then I redo the whole thing to be real. But, mm. and I did the same thing. When I was on Bumble, I was, it was all about like what I thought guys wanted to yeah. see. It was like the most awful version of me. It was just <laughs> like, I oh got, I'm like blonde and party girl. <laughs> it was so bad. And, a client will call me just the other day, called me and for 20 minutes was like, okay, these are all the reasons why I think he's really into me. And I'm like, let her finish. I'm like, and what did you think? Right. Yep. Did he meet your standards? Yep. What core values does he, all of these questions, she's like, hmm, I it's, don't know. It kind of becomes so much more of like a winning game a little bit where it's like, That's I just want to make sure that they like me. Not like, do I actually like them? Do I want to date this person? I feel like I almost barely asked myself that question. It was more of exactly like, does he like me back? Yeah. And I've talked about this, but it, it is this epidemic of needing to be chosen. It, it, yes. It's an achievement just like anything else. Mm -hmm. And of course, we've been bred to like go to really good schools and get great jobs and in sports. I mean, we're bred to be achievers, but this is backfiring on yeah. everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 
actually it's easier than people think. It's not about fixing you. It's not about adding, what can I do? What can you tell me or give me? It's like stripping away all the BS yeah. so that someone can really see you. Yeah. Right. And so a lot of my coaching is like vulnerability mm-hmm. and being warm and validated. Yeah. What does that mean? What does that look like? Even in your texting, you know, most of the women I work with, their texting style is like short and like stoic mm. and almost like sitting back waiting yeah. to see if the guy will make a move. And it's like, no, 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 no. Like it's okay to like lean into your feminine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's not weak. It's yep. actually the most powerful place you can be is sort of like sitting back because as women, when we're do, do, doing all the time, like our whole intuition gets shut off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so then it just becomes robotic. Then you're going through dating like anything else. I feel like such a huge thing for us growing up was this book on our mom's bookshelf. He's just not that into you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. And this, like I've had to like like there's been a large amount of deconstructing in my own brain, like especially when I was dating. And like, I think women want to play like this extreme hard to get game. Yeah. And and maybe some of that is is good and like, you know, kind of keeps you guarded. But then some of it, you know, doesn't allow you to express yourself in a vulnerable way or like be your true self at all. Yeah. Or that book, The Rules. Yes. The Rules. So, so, the Bible like, in our home. Oh uh-huh. Gosh. Yeah. I, oh, <laughs> I just want to like take every one of those books and burn them. Because it really taught women that they need to be something else yeah. in order to be lovable. Yeah. And it's the opposite. Like yeah. the more you lean in, the better off you are. And like, don't be afraid. Like I remember on my dating journey, the second time around, a light bulb went off. Like, I'm like not for everyone. Mm. I'm so not. And that's totally okay. Yeah. So then then I was sort of fearless. Yeah. And then I would like ask all the questions mm-hmm. and I would like not really put on all the makeup. And it just became like so much easier. Yeah. But I think as a woman, you're like, I want to be for everyone. I want everyone to be yes. obsessed with me. Every guy, you know, to be obsessed with me. Oh my gosh. Yes. I would love it if we could share, like going back a little bit, your story, how Love Amy came to be and just kind of like, yeah, what brought you to this place? Yeah. It's sort of like the biggest plot twist in my life and the biggest joy to find my purpose finally after all these years. And now it seems like it all led up to this, but I was in PR and marketing and Chan and I were talking yeah. earlier about, I met my husband at our first job, my you know, first husband, our first job. And it just made sense. Like it made sense at the time. And we have two really great kids. And all of a sudden I was writing my latest book, which came out a little while ago, just when you're comfortable in your own skin, it starts to sag and it's about, <laughs> you know, kind of when you hit like <laughs> mid amazing. Yeah. And we were interviewing all these beautiful, brave women telling us their stories. And it just struck me. Like, I can't write this book and not face that I'm just not that happy in my marriage. And it was the hardest thing. And I did that. I finally did that. And I was spit out of that marriage, like not knowing what I was going to do professionally, really not sort of grounded And I just decided I was going to make dating my job in New York City. Wow. And so that was kind of hilarious. And it was just one of those things where I didn't know why I was doing it, but I was, I knew it had a purpose. Like Mm -hmm. I knew it was a bigger purpose for me. So, I mean, I did probably three years of dating in like six months. Wow. (laughs) Wow. Yeah. And I just realized so quickly, like all the mistakes I was making and without realizing it was that putting the path together for Love Amy. And it just happened so organically where I met Brett, I started dating him, and I had dated some really awesome people through the journey. And my friends were like, what the hell? (laughs) What is going on? I don't get it. You're happy. (laughs) And so friends and friends of friends, they were my guinea pigs. And when I started the business, it's funny, I started being like a ghost banterer. Okay. Because people, the number one thing people hate are their photos being taken for the apps. And the n- second thing they hate the most is the banter. Yeah. So I would like log in as them. I would ghost banter as them and then set up dates. And it was kind of magical because I'm really good. Like my whole PR communications background, it's sort of like I'm very good at it. Yeah. And then still they weren't moving forward. And I was like, guys, what's going on? Like I'm serving you up the yeah. dates. Yeah. And then I realized, oh, okay. Like, it's an energetic block. It's an energetic block. Like any time through your life, 
any time you have felt unlovable, maybe your heart was broken, maybe it was usually it's a parent or two that kind of instill like this feeling of like I have to be something else to be lovable. Those are energy blocks. Yeah. So my witchiness, because I'm an intuitive <laughs> as well, kicked in. And I was so then again, as guinea pigs, I was helping people kind of like shift from fear to love and start to really fall in love with themselves. And then boop, the magic happened. And like my success rate is ridiculous. So after a while, I decided I was going to go for it. Oh my gosh. That's incredible. Can you share a little bit more about like meeting Brett and also like how old you were at the time? Cause like, yeah. we have a lot of questions that are like, I'm in my late thirties. I'm in my early forties. Like yeah. this is so hard. Yeah. And so I would love to, I think your story is just so inspiring and oh, cool. Thank you so much. So I was in my late forties when yeah. I <laughs> spit out of this marriage and started dating. So I was equally, I feel like I was even more scared mm -hmm. because I felt like Oh, gosh, is this past my expiration date? Like, what's going on? So, it, it, you know, it really became this sobering journey of becoming more of myself. Mm. And by the time I met Brett, I had been on a lot of dates. And we met at Joe and the Juice on the Upper East Side because that was my one of my biggest rules is mini screener date. You're not, you know, doing yeah. a whole dinner. And I remember I had like two other dates that day. <laughs> <laughs> and he sort of dresses like Steve Jobs. He presents himself very seriously. And we had this like nice chat. And I, at this point, was so comfortable in my own skin. I was like talking about like meditating. I was talking about like, oh, I, sometimes I talk to dead people or I, I have crystals. <laughs> and, you know, I didn't go super far into it, but enough where he was like, aha, uh -huh, okay. <laughs> and he left and I was like, I will never hear from this individual again. And so then he was going on a solo bike trip. I was going to Ghana on a volunteer trip. And we he just started texting me. And it was really nice. Like, it was just nice. And he was like, can we go on a real date? I'm like, sure. And we went to dinner at Scala Nutella on the Upper East Side. And that was a real date. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was, looked cuter. <laughs> I had, like, more makeup on. <laughs> And then I just remember laughing, you know, and really we were connecting on our kids. And and then it was interesting. Like, I thought, I don't know. Like, I'm laughing. And then he's like, want to go play ping pong? I'm like, okay, I've never played, whatever. <laughs> so we go to this ping pong place. It's filled with, like, people on date nights. And we're playing ping pong. I don't think I've ever told this story. <laughs> we're playing ping pong. And he looks at me and drops the paddle, walks around the table, and, like, kisses me like <gasps> I have never been kissed. Oh my gosh. And I just, my knees buckled, honestly. And I was like, whoa, this is reverse chemistry. Wow. This is reverse chemistry because it's like the more we connected on an emotional intimacy level. Mm -hmm. And then it was like, we were that couple making out in the corner. Oh my gosh. Um, you know, so it, it, it just, it really grew from there. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. That story is incredible. <laughs> I love that story. And I also love the concept of mini screener date mm -hmm. because I feel like when I was dating, I was, you know, when I met my husband, I was 27, but I was like, I need a guy who's like early forties, has his career built. I can have a family immediately. You know, I don't want to like, I don't want to grow someone up. Like I don't want to <laughs> yeah, do that. You don't want a project. Like yeah. I'll skip the struggle if I can. <laughs> and <laughs> what I was doing was I was selecting for guys with commitment issues who are also dating women inappropriately. <laughs> like I was, I was literally selecting for men with issues. <laughs> and this created Perfect. a lot of problems. <laughs> so my husband was a year younger than me mm. when I met him or when I, you know, saw him on the app. Still is. He, <laughs> he's still with yeah, us. And he, he continues to be a year younger than me. Anyway, but it's so funny because I was like 26. Absolutely not. He's not going to be ready <laughs> for the life I want. Yeah. Like this is just never going to happen. Yeah. And I canceled on our first date because I was just like, no, little boy. Um, <laughs> I know. And so we ended up getting a drink a week later because he was a little persistent to me. And so it was like, I kind of did like the mini screener date as well, where I was like, all right, let's meet for one drink, eight o'clock. And I'm, I you know, I, I have a nine o'clock bedtime. I love it. Because you guys, you just need to like meet the person, feel their energy. Yeah. Yep. And it could be a 30 minute coffee, a 30 minute smoothie yes. just to like get the vibe because you really do know that quickly. And a lot of people, I think they spin their wheels mm -hmm. chatting on these apps for days oh, yeah. or weeks. I'm sorry. Yeah. Months like even. Yep. Yep. It's crazy. Yeah. And there's yeah. nothing worse than going. I remember going on this date that a matchmaker set up for me. 
And this guy, it was like a four hour dinner. Oh gosh. And I literally had 14 drinks because I was, <laughs> so I'm like blitzed. <laughs> and like, finally I went up to the bartender when he went to the bathroom. I'm like, just a shot. I don't know. Can you see what's <laughs> happening? He's like, I'm so sorry. That is brutal. But it's just, there's nothing worse. And then you just feel defeated. Yes. You, you've, now your wheels have come off. You've wasted all this time. So, it can it can be so exhausting to go on first dates. Yeah. And I think that is where a lot of like the, the narrative of it's so hard to date. It, it just comes from, I think, the bad first dates that, you know, mm -hmm. you, I feel like you go on five or six bad first dates to get like one medium good one. With like a guy who then ghosts you or something. Totally. And that's why the mini screener date is great because you have to just start dating. Mm -hmm. Like I see people all the time waiting for the perfect person. Yeah. For the perfect profile. for the, And that's not going to happen. Yeah. It's like you need to get out there and get the energy going. Mm -hmm. And on mini screeners, like I would show up. I had the same coffee shop in my neighborhood. The barista knew my game. He was like, <laughs> who do we have today? <laughs> and I would sit and I'd get there early and set my energy and like whoever sat in front of me, I'm like, hey, Bob, what's yeah. going on? Yeah. How's yeah. dating going for you? That was yeah. always my first question. You will get so much juicy information from that question. It cuts through the BS of yeah. like the weather. And it just became, I remember exiting a date that was so misaligned and I was in a great mood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, you know what? This is great. Yeah. And now I know when a client has that feeling. Yeah. Like, All right. We're on our way. Can I tell you what was delivered today? What was? My DoorDash of Clean Simple Eats Clear Protein. You DoorDashed it? I DoorDashed it from Vitamin Shop. You're kidding. Because I'm like, I cannot wait for this to be, like, I can't order it online. Oh my gosh. That's incredible. I haven't even thought about that. That's like, wow. I'm obsessed with Clear Protein. Yeah. You can get it at Vitamin Shop. It's by Clean Simple Eats. It's a protein drink, everyone. It just tastes like a light, refreshing, cold juice. Mm -hmm. It tastes so mm -hmm. good. And there's 20 grams of clean grass-fed protein for 90 calories. It's amazing. On the days where you just want something that's like a little bit lighter than a protein shake, I love my clear protein. You don't have to mess up your kitchen. You just grab one from yep. the fridge. They're so worth it to me. I'm so excited. You guys, go to cleansimpleats.com. Use code POPAPOLOGIST for 10% off your order. You need to try the clear protein by Clean Simple Eats. It's a genius product. Cleansimpleats.com. I also feel like for me, it was easy to be like, okay, I'll do a drink with this person rather than like, I'm going to commit to a three hour date and like getting in a cute outfit and like this, the whole thing yeah. with someone I think that is, you know, definitely not going to work because they're younger than me or whatever. Yeah. So I think that a lot of times it can just like help you, I guess, get to know a wide variety of people. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. But let's go back. What are people doing wrong on the apps? That's my question <laughs> because I think that how you present yourself on the apps is so important and we might be doing it all wrong. I think we are. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think we are. And I see thousands of profiles, right? And so I do have some male clients, which are really interesting. So I see a lot of female like mm -hmm. with my clients and through, through their swiping. But what we're doing, first of all, it's very daunting. It's like, what pictures do you put up? There's very little space to write anything. So what people are doing is they're trying to be funny. They're yeah. trying to be cool. And they're just pulling from what they're seeing. And it just ends up being so not them. And so what we're doing is we're just presenting watered down versions of ourselves. Yeah. And then we're surprised when we attract like this whole group of people who don't really align with us at all. So it's really scary. But when I redo a client's profile, they look at it like, oh, gosh, I mean, can I really say ready for the real thing? Can I really put that nerdy thing about me winning the spelling bee in third grade, like what? And you have to be earnest. Mm -hmm. You just do because if, if you want to attract someone who's emotionally mature and who's open and who's kind and really ready, then you have to be that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and I always say, and I've said this, you have to be ready for less people to like you. Mm. This is not the dopamine hit that mm -hmm. go to Instagram, do whatever yeah. else. But yeah. This is not it, you know? So less people are going to like you. I always have to coach people and get them ready for this. And then you'll see, you'll see that slowly but surely, the like more aligned people will be drawn to you. Yeah. Something that we were chatting about earlier is, you know, the mistakes you make not only with your profile, but also with the people that you are selecting. And I felt like when I was on dating apps, 
I was only looking for people who were cool. Mm -hmm. Like cool was a huge factor for me. And I said this to you, I don't know that I necessarily would have swiped on my fiance because I don't know that like, and I don't actually know what his dating profile ever looked like, but I think that he maybe had a more earnest uh, approach than a cool alternative indie factor. And that's what I was looking for. And all of those guys were the worst. No, I have so much trauma from you dealing with these men. And yes. also, like, you would tell me, you're like, I want a guy who's just, like, so funny over text yes. and, like, oh. and like is so witty. And I'm like, well, maybe you should want a guy who, like, has a job, okay? <laughs> who doesn't have time to be a no. stand-up comic for you on, you know, Hinge. He did, like, <laughs> I needed, like, uh, Larry David, like, over text. Legitimately. <laughs> Well, and I think that's a really big one, too, is not everyone's great at texting. Yeah. So I have a client right now, and I'm pretty sure that she just met her person. They're on date six. Oh. And it's really beautiful. And she called me the other day, and she's like, Amy, it's, like, amazing. He's so much funnier. He's so Mm -hmm. much wittier. And he just, he's really successful. He does not have a lot of time. He doesn't enjoy the whole initial banter because it doesn't feel authentic. Yeah, to him. yeah. So you have to be forgiving. Yes, I think it's also like a red flag if someone is so charismatic over text instantly, or at least like this is someone who has a lot of practice. Yeah, you know, and is, you're probably one of very many. So yeah, I think it's also like how you select, and if you like, are you actually looking with your heart, or are you just looking with like? Who's going to be the, like the guy that's going to look the coolest on my Instagram? Totally. Also, we are such suckers for a compliment. Mm-hmm. So it's like whenever someone opens with, hey, beautiful, or, oh, your pictures are gorgeous. Do you have any more? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that anyone ever said that to me. <laughs> I mean, it's stunning, though. Like, I have clients who are, like, texting pictures. <laughs> like, what are you doing? <laughs> that is not Okay. By the way, you're never going to text anyone without saying, what's your last name? I always ask. Okay, yeah. Google them. Yeah, mm. yeah. And no one does it. I, yeah, that's true. I did definitely. I mean, I Instagram stalk. Did you Instagram stalk Katie before? Of course. Yeah, I Instagram stalk Ben, but that was it. I didn't Google. Maybe I should have Googled too. That would have been, been interesting. <laughs> yeah, LinkedIn. you just have to. It's just a nice, every part of my program is designed to just kind of cancel people out who are not yeah. in the game for the same reasons that you are. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So when you ghost banter with somebody, what's like your timetable with like, okay, we've had a three or four back and forths. When do we need to go on the date? Because I think that was that's also a hard thing like Lauren was saying, you know, you end up bantering for so long that it's like, okay, when are we going to actually like fish and yeah. cut bait and fish or whatever? I always say like <laughs> fish, or cu- <laughs> fish or cut bait. <laughs> I've never fished before in my life. Fish or cut bait, one or the other. <laughs> that's awesome. So, so yeah, I always say we do not do pen pals, right? So I would say usually if a guy is ready for a relationship, he's not going to text you for four days or five days. I mean, sometimes it'll go on and on. Usually it's like five back and forth and it's like, hey, I'd love to like take you out for a drink. But sometimes it can go on. You basically after five days of banter, I coach people to say, so sounds like we would have a lot in common to talk about Mm -hmm. in person, smiley face. I mean, I'm a big chivalry person. Yeah. I love it when a guy courts. Yep. It's some people. I do have clients who are such feminists and they're, they're like, no, 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 no. Everything has to be equal. That's yeah. great. Yeah. That's great. Ask them out. But for the most part, I have clients who want to wait yeah. for the guy. So you can hint. Yeah. Right. But if they don't take it, the hint immediately, just unmatch. And by the way. Oh, you, just unmatch. Just unmatch. Love you it. don't. The rule on the apps is very, the rules are different. So you don't know this person. Yeah. You can just. Interesting. Whoop. You don't have to say, uh, oh, sorry. Yeah. I'm going to unmatch you. <laughs> <laughs> Respectfully, I'm going to unmatch yeah. you. I'm going to disappear. I, I kind of love that, that it's just like, okay, this is clearly not going anywhere. You're not moving like in the right direction. So, you know, there are others. I'm moving on. But what if they're like just not picking up the hint? I mean, do you give them like a final chance? No. No, you don't. No, you don't. Because here's the thing, and I know this to be true. A man who's ready will literally hunt you down. Mm-hmm. A man who's ready will... I have a client who, she lives in Nashville, and this guy lives in California. He was just intersecting for a business meeting, and every weekend he flies to her to take her out. Yeah. I mean, it's just true. Mm-hmm. So if you have to... And, and my female clients are all stumped. Like, well, what do I need to do to get him to, like, yeah. be ready? You don't. He's they, not your man. Yeah, they either are or they aren't. I mean, a story that I love to tell is just that like Ben, my fiance and I, we went on our first date in Utah and then I flew back to San Francisco the next day 
And two weeks later, he flew to San Francisco for our second date. I love that. And that was the most grandest gesture that had ever been done for me. And that was just for our second. I mean, I guess we had kissed at that point. Spoiler. But yeah, like (laughs) it was just like, okay, he is clearly ready to, you know, buy a plane ticket and, you know, go on a second date. That was he's ready. Mm -hmm. I love that. It's so true. Yeah. And and it just sort of eliminates that whole mindset of, oh, my gosh, what do I have to do? Yes. To get someone to like me. Yeah. You'll never guess. Mm -hmm. You will never be confused. You will never have to ruminate over, did I say the wrong thing? Did I wear Mm -hmm. the wrong thing? Ever. Yeah. Your person will just, it'll be easy. Yeah. It'll flow. And the chemistry might not be insane at the beginning. And that's what I want, really want people to hear. Yeah. You know? I mean, it's it's funny that you say that because I really feel like that was my experience with my husband where I was super attracted to him. And like we had good chemistry, but it wasn't like he was so nice to me. And so it was so stable. And just like he called when he said he would. And he just didn't treat me like shit. And so it just wasn't as thrilling immediately because I wasn't like being nagged on some level. Like I wasn't having to overcome yes. some other behavior I had experienced in the past. And that for me, the stability was kind of almost like boring. Yes. yeah. And I had to like push past that mentally. Yeah. Yes. It wasn't as sexy. It wasn't as sexy. Yeah. yeah. Like our nervous systems get wired when we keep choosing yeah. the wrong people. It's just a wiring issue. Mm. You have to literally step outside of yourself, view yourself and say, okay, I'm doing things differently now. Yeah. 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 And the nice guy will never feel comfortable at first Mm. if you are used to just, you know, attracting noncommittal guys. So I have to really hold people's hands through that. Yeah. Because they'll say, ugh, not not the egg. Like I had this one client. Oh, my gosh. They were on three dates. They were on a fourth date. And they were having a drink and she called me from the bathroom. She goes, I can't do this. <laughs> and I'm like, what's going on? You guys are relying on all the things. Yeah. He's the nicest guy. She said, well, I didn't realize he has a bald spot in the back of his head. <laughs> and I just saw it. Like, you've got to help me. And I'm like, listen, yeah. go back there. Yeah. Take a few breaths. Yeah. And now they're engaged. Yeah. I want to hear you talk more about the ick because I think that's been, you know, it's a, it's a very real thing. Yeah. And, you know, maybe some people kind of give into the ick a little too soon yeah. about things that are just like everyone's a person, you know, and they're going to have an awkward moment where they, you know, you see them running and you're like, oh, that doesn't look good. <laughs> yes, totally. <laughs> when you get the ick, that is a light shining on something you have to heal. Oh, wow. Okay. Damn. Well, I have a lot to heal looking back at my dating past. Can I tell you a a quick story? I was dating a guy um, in college, and I remember he, like, after the date, he um, got some ice cream, and he gave himself, like, three. Pause. I remember you calling me to tell me, like, I just can't date this person after the yeah. Okay. So he got himself like three healthy scoops of ice cream. Okay. And then he proceeds to tell me that he does this every night. And I'm just like, goodbye. Like, I could never be with someone that eats this much ice cream. You were just like, this is so indulgent. Like, what does it say about other things in his life? Was he fit and healthy? He was like fit enough. And he was a totally cute enough guy. And he was on, he honestly like had like a great career and stuff. But I was just like, absolutely not. He just had an abundant mindset. Yes. And I never talked to him again. Like, <laughs> This poor guy. No. He's just like, I'm just comfortable. I'm just, this is who I am. <laughs> wow. Gosh, that's really funny. Yeah. I mean, but I do think, though, that it may be, I guess I need to, you know, re-examine heal. and heal my relationship with, you know, dairy um, <laughs> <laughs> or what I see as indulgence. But no, it's true because so many of these things, like eventually you'll see your your person in unflattering lighting and yeah, yes. not looking their best And I think that love is like not caring at all about any of that, you know, and just loving the human that they are and, you know, with flaws and all. I know that's like the whole point of Love is Blind, which the show, which I'm addicted to. It's just sad, though, because it's just not enough. Yeah. But I do think we're looking for that soul connection. Yeah. I can Mm -hmm. talk all day long about, you know, the height bias and just the ways in which people hold themselves back. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's just really kind of getting very clear about what you want and being able to voice it. I think yeah. it's so hard for people. It's yeah. like, again, anyone listening, if you DM me on Instagram, I am putting together just for you guys some date questions that you can ask that are not scary, mm-hmm. you know, and 
it's like, what's been the biggest plot twist of your life? Yeah. That's a great question. Like I had a client who asked that question to a guy on the second date. She said, there's no way I'm going out with him again. And he said, well, I, I got cancer when I was younger. And so I really care so much about health and wellness and meeting the right people. And so they're well on their way. Right. And so we have to know what we stand for and what we want. And we have to be able to like in a very skillful, vulnerable way, kind of put it out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not it's not vomiting out your whole story on the first date. Yeah. That's not it. It's yeah. just I remember being on dates post divorce and I, I had this really I had two lines. I, I scripted it out. I'm gonna say these two lines when someone inevitably says, You're divorced, what happened? And I would say, Great guy, we met in our twenties, and now in our forties, we realized we really are different people, and now I'm, I've, I've done a lot of work on myself because growth and personal growth is a big core value of mine, so I would start to segue into that, and then I would flip the script and be like, what does that mean to you? Yeah. Like, what are you working on? And it was great because some guys would just like want to pass out. They're like, what are you talking about, work on myself? I'd be like, check, please. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. No, I think it's so important to be able to be fun and be light with guys, but also like be authentic with them and kind of get those pulse checks on yeah. are you in any way like my type of person yeah. and will you kind of respect the things that are really valuable to me or are they things that are unimportant to you and you'll on some level like put down or whatever. And I always get this question, but what if it scares him? And my answer is always the same. Not your person. Not your person. Yeah. yeah. Not your person. And you have to be okay with that. Like yeah. it took me a while to be mm -hmm. okay with someone looking at me like, oh, whoa, whoa. Mm -hmm. So serious on our first date. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Everyone, I am back from traveling and jet lag is real. And thank goodness I have early bird gummies because they are there for me when I do not want to be awake too early in the morning, when I want to fall asleep at the right time. They are so amazing. Early bird CBD gummies are such a miracle because for me, they let you melt away for just a few more hours of sleep. They quiet down your brain so you can watch a show, mm -hmm. so you can enjoy a meal even more. Yeah. They're really so versatile. You guys, you need to go to earlybirdcbd.com. Try these gummies. They're perfect instead of a glass of wine yeah, after a long great. day. I prefer them a lot of the time to drinking. They to unwind. Are. Yeah, to unwind. Absolutely. They're so good. You guys, go to earlybirdcbd.com. Use code POP20 for 20% off. That's a big discount. A huge discount. They ship to all 50 states. So you can get this anywhere in the U.S. We love Early Bird CBD and we know you will too. These are the best gummies. No, but I think it's it's so important. You talk a lot about, you know, like having like the same core values. And I remember on on our first date, Ben and I, like we he talked a lot about like, you know, leaving Mormonism and like deconstructing mm -hmm. his faith. And, you know, we, we talked about a lot of the other superficial things, you know, what do you do for work? All those other things. But I just remember my biggest takeaway was, oh, he's a person of conviction. Mm -hmm. And that to me was something that I never really got to with a lot of other you know, first dates because we just talked about superficial things. It was the job interview type thing. Yeah. And I remember that was like maybe the most attractive thing to me just post our first date. I love that so much conviction. And it's not a typical core value yeah. that yeah. you would think of like family or yes. health and wellness for Brett. He ended up taking this quiz later, but his number one core value is forgiveness. Mm. Oh, wow. Which is really incredible. I love that. And in early dating, I could tell. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Talking about his divorce, talking about business stuff, his three daughters, I could tell that that was something. It's just, I, did, I couldn't pin it at the time, yeah. but I knew it felt really warm yep. and authentic. I mean, I also think that, I mean, just double tapping on that for a second, like if your core value is forgiveness, that probably means you've been through a lot in your life. Mm -hmm. And what an incredible core value to come out of those experiences with right. yeah. and compassion and, and, for that. And that's what you want yeah. by yourself. Totally. Like mm -hmm. that, that's your state of mind. You yeah. know, you're not jaded or, you know, cynical. Yeah. And I always, I have this post date checklist that I have my clients fill out. And one of the questions is, what is this person's baseline emotion? Mm. Because you can tell. Yeah. yeah. Is it pessimism? Is it anger? Mm -hmm. Is it woe is me? Yeah. Is it insecurity? So really just taking stock of that. Yeah. You know, you're not going to change someone's default <laughs> state. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. I mean, I think that's truly one of the biggest things is marrying someone who's happy, yeah. who's a happy person who right. wakes up happy. Cause no matter what happens to us in life, I do think we all go back to our, whatever our baseline is, whatever we just tend to end up feeling yeah. just kind of as, you know, it doesn't matter if we win the lottery or lose the lottery, 
people tend to just be as happy as they generally yeah, are. Yeah. And I think that one of the mistakes I made, you know, early on was being very attracted to broodiness mm -hmm. and kind of like people who are very self-important and very self-serious. You know, my husband is so light and happy and wakes up with such joy and doesn't take things too seriously. Yeah, and that has become like such a blessing for me because it makes everyday life so much better. Yeah. But I kind of stumbled into that and I should have been more intentional looking for it. I think that's really interesting. I have a lot of clients who pride themselves on being caregivers, fixers, mm -hmm. you know, people pleasers. That's a really big one. So they're attracted to guys who might need help. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so that feels really good to them. Yeah. And so I have to pull them back and, and switch the lens because if you really, and I have, I, I have clients do visioning work. Anyone can do this. You take a piece of paper out and really spill out everything you want in a partner. And if you want to be inspired, which we all do, yeah. we all, yeah. I think we all should be inspired by our partner yeah. in some way, yeah. then you can't be the fixer. Yeah. Mm, you have right. to let them take care of you a little bit. You have mm -hmm. to let them like sometimes homework. I give clients like an intention for every date and homework. And sometimes homework is on that date. You have to ask for help. Interesting. Mm. Don't See you, how it goes. Kind of. yeah. yeah. Ask. It could be anything. Yeah. Oh, I'm working on this tech thing. Or it can be like, oh my gosh, you know, what do you think of? I know that you're in, you're an engineer. Yeah. What, it could be anything. Love that. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like when a woman says, mm, you know, I love caregiving and like Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Anything in that realm is coming from a place of I don't feel like I'm enough, and so I need to provide a service to like validate being in this person's life. Absolutely, that's how we're bred. Mm -hmm. That's how we're bred in this culture. Is we're I mean I have it on my intake. Are you a perfectionist? Yes. Ninety five percent of people say yes. Are you a people pleaser? Yeah. Ninety five percent. Yeah. 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 I'm a recovered. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? It's hard. It's hard. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Okay, kind of different topic, but before we get to listener questions, we do need to get to them. What do you say to the girl who's like, I'm 5'7", and I will not date someone who's, you know, shorter than 5'7", or 5'8". Like, I will shake her violently. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's one of my, like, biggest nits because we're looking for a soul connection. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, name so many celebrities who are married to shorter guys. I always try to list them off. It's so weird to me. Yeah. It's weird. And I, I get this a lot. I feel safer <laughs> with a tall guy. Like, yeah, but he's, if he's beating you every day. <laughs> right. So like, it might be rude. Right. So I would just urge people to be really forgiving of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's every inch. This sounds weird. Every inch you shave off of height is thousands of people on the apps. Yeah. Thousands. Mm -hmm. So just wiggle it down and yeah. just just practice well and also if you are like you know no one out there to date well that might be the tr the truth if your parameter is i need someone two inches taller than me and they live one square mile away yes. right yes. Like, yeah. yeah all of them like yeah. i think there are probably so many good guys who do have that happen to them because women do do that i i don't know i feel like short men are kind of uh, the most marginalized part of our society on some level and people just don't you know no one's advocating for them no, so anyway. no, and it's poor sad. souls are lying about their height so yes or lying about their age I heard Every you say person. on a podcast everyone lies so about their age I'm fighting right now with a client who's 45 and she wants to be 38 but I don't understand that because eventually that's that's going to be a huge thing to have come out because then you're in a position to confess you're confessing on the first date it's like Really? Is that what we want to do? I mean, by the way, and I hear this all the, I'm going to get boxed out because guys are going to say they want someone, you know, 28 to 40 and I'm 41. Like the birthday thing is huge. I'm oh dirty. My and my response is the same. It's like your person wants you as you are. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. He really does. Yeah. Yeah. Like maybe you don't want the guy who's like, I only want to date girls, you know, the Leonardo DiCaprio. Oh, like yeah. I only want to date girls from 20 to 24. <laughs> 20 to like, 21. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like one of the things I've witnessed, because we get, I think, taught in our society that men will always want a woman much younger than them, mm -hmm. and they'll be you know, exclusively looking for that. I remember watching like a 60 Minutes, and it was about from these like Harvard-educated women that basically what they were saying, or like these very high-achieving women, and they were saying that it was harder for them to date because in general, men don't care about a woman's you know, accomplishments or whatever. Uh. And I feel like I look around in my life and all the men I see are with equals yeah. and want yeah. equals. They and do. I don't see any guys who just picked up the local 19-year-old. You know, they all have someone who's age-appropriate, who they've been with for a very long time. It almost just doesn't seem true to reality. It just seems like a very 
you know. Well, it's it's the men who are ready for the real thing. It's the men who are emotionally mature, mm-hmm. right? Like, what does it say about a man? Is that going to be your guy? Is right. that who you want? Right. I remember on our third date, it just, just dawned on me. Brett said something like, oh, my God, Helen Mirren, she's hot. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm looking good. Incredible. <laughs> you know? And he's like, no, no, no. She's just, she's accomplished. Yeah. She's gray. She's He's like, I love gray hair. I'm like, oh my God, this is awesome. Yeah. Yes. Totally. Yeah. It was like yeah. such a sexy turn on. <laughs> no, absolutely. You're like, oh, this is the way he thinks about women. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. like that. And it's important to kind of see that, you know? Yeah. yeah. Like That's... he loves that. He's right. like, every morning, he's like, oh, this is how, how you look right now is exactly right. And I'm like, oh, oh my God. Yeah. It's so wonderful. No, and I, and I also think that like men really do love women who have their own lives, their own yeah. accomplishments. That is so attractive compared to someone who, they need to create a life for. Yeah. Well, yeah. and I hear this all the time. I feel like I have to dim down mm. in my dating life. I'm like, oh my God, no, no, no. We're firing up. Yeah. 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 We're dimming up. Right. Yeah. Like, and it's just, it's an epidemic. I see it all the time. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm intimidating to men. Or I, I work with a lot of women who are complete badasses. Yeah. They're CEOs. They're, they're amazing. So. I always felt like I couldn't show my complete personality on the first date or two. I definitely felt like I was like, oh, maybe I'm like, you know, too boisterous or whatever. And what's funny is that like we had our podcast already started when I when I met Ben and he started listening to episodes very early on in us dating. In fact, like before our second date, he was like, I've listened to like four episodes of your podcast this weekend. And it was kind of a thing where I was like, oh no, I don't want you to see that, all the sides of me. This I don't want you to see my honest self this mm-hmm. soon. Yeah. And that was scary to me. So I, I definitely relate to feeling like you need to dim down or like in steps, you can like show your full self. Right. It's that skillful vulnerability. Yeah. Like, I would always get miscast in my dating life. I think a lot of us do. It's like if one more guy said, like, were you in cheerleader? I'm like, I'm from Connecticut. I'm like, no, I'm from Detroit and I will cut you. <laughs> no, but, you know, I'm, I'm a super dork and it's just I would at least let them see a little side of that. Yeah. Yeah. That I've worked my whole life since I was 16. I put myself through college. Like I would I would at least let them know a little bit like, mm-hmm. all right, you know, right. Here I am. Yeah. What do you say to women or men who say, I don't want to meet someone on the apps. Like I want to, you know, meet someone at a bookstore. That is such a good question. I'm so glad you asked me. Here's a newsflash. (laughs) The same cute person that you might meet at your friend's dinner party in two weeks is very likely also on the app. But you'll never swipe on them because they're really bad at it. They've thrown up some crappy pictures. They've barely written anything. And you will be like, ick. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So you have to know that you cannot trust yourself when you are sorting on the apps. Mm -hmm. You can't. That's true. You really can't. You have to. I always sit with clients. I'm like, they're either in the zone or they're not. If they're in the zone with very little information, then we're going to say yes and say hi. And you're going to do that 20 people a day I want you yeah. to say hi to on the apps. 20 people a day. Okay, wow. so so you're saying you need, and are you doing this for them or No, they do I'm it? no longer. That was just at the beginning of my business because I realized it was a crutch. Yeah. But I am coaching to it. Okay. Like I'll get in there at the beginning yeah. and I'll show them, but yeah. So you're saying get on the apps and also start saying yes to way more people. Yeah. Okay. Say yes. I yeah. mean, it just depends on the day or the week. Yeah. You know, I've, the apps go up and down, but we have to stop taking it personally. Mm-hmm. If what the apps are showing us isn't appealing. You're looking for a unicorn. So 99.9% of all people on the apps are not going to be for you. Right. Well, and I think it is such a numbers game. And so when you can increase the amount of people you're getting their energy, you're, you know, getting a a juice with, you're you're meeting in person, you're really going to increase the likelihood you'll meet your person. And like, you know, back to when I met Kagan, my husband, I really walked into that, that date. And I said to myself, like, steps for meeting him I was like so tired I hadn't seen him yet but I was just like walking in I'm like it's eight o'clock I'm exhausted don't want to do this but I was like this is how you're going to meet the love of your life is you're going to go on the date I love that and I do think you have to like put in the effort and also he was in my same city you know in my same town a mile away from me mm-hmm. we went to the same high school we graduated in the same high school class That's crazy it's crazy we didn't crazy. know each other in high school we met Eight years later. I mean, I will say he knew who you were. 
He knew who I was because I, you know, dressed very like flamboyantly. So oh Lauren, gosh, Lauren wore like funny. heels and long strand pearls to high school. So oh, couldn't that miss me. And had platinum blonde hair. So, you I know, it. it wasn't an option to, you know, not see me. Fly under the radar. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But no, so like we would have truly never met, even though we were living next to each other basically, same age, like we should have met, but we just never would have without the apps. And so And yeah. what you're saying is really important. You were not excited. No. It's not like you, I hear this every day. Amy, I'm just not excited about this (laughs) day. Like, really? Here's a news flash again. You know, you're not going to be excited most of the time. I wasn't excited. Also, for my first, I was like, you know, I was, I was, I remember you telling me just go and like, and I was staying with our other sister at the time. They're like, stay home, watch the season premiere or season finale of this show. I was like, I have to go on this date. Hopefully I'll be back in like 90 minutes. <laughs> yeah. <You know? laughs> yes. That's amazing. Not excited. And that, but I think it's a testament that like it, you have to go on the date and that you still might meet your person even if you're not excited. Mm-hmm. Right. Exactly. And I always say it just has to be something that's in your calendar. Like if you yeah. can do a mini screener date a week, then do it. Sometimes yeah. that won't happen, but. Yeah. Should we get to listener questions? Yeah. I feel like we have so many. <laughs> I mean, here's the big one. Why will men not commit? That's what someone said here. Yeah. That's a big one. I think in general, people have a commitment issue in this culture. Mm. It's a it's sort of a throwaway culture. I think there's a lot of fear. And we can spend the next year pondering the question. But what we really should be pondering is how do I find my person who's aligned with me? Yeah. Because all the time people are like analyzing, well, how come he watches my Instagram stories, but he ghosted me? It's like, yeah. We cannot spend one more second on that. We just have to move on. Not your person. And yeah. the right man will commit, you oh know? Gosh. There are plenty of amazing men. Mm-hmm. We're yeah. just not magnetizing to them. Right. I remember when I was a senior in high school, I was dating this guy and he was friends with all the popular guys and he was a popular guy or whatever. And I remember talking with him and I had this huge light bulb moment because he was kind of like revealing their insecurities. And I just had this moment where I was like, oh, guys are like insecure. They're not just these like don't care creatures who are, you know, completely infallible. Like they actually also really want love and are really afraid of rejection. Like I think there are so many men who have all the same fears as women and want to like have that commitment. We have to look at it like we're on the same team. Yeah, We're two humans trying to connect on a deep level. So that's why I love the question on on your very first date, first out of the gate, you ask, like, how's it going? Yeah. Like, how's yeah. dating going? You're on the same team and it's just a really nice way to to learn more about someone. Do you feel like that question sort of helps a person sift through whether or not this person, maybe, you know, if it's a guy, like, is a player or not? Oh, yeah. You know, because I think that's something that, like, a lot of, like, with, you know, why men won't commit sort of question, like, you end up meeting a lot of just, like, players who are just, like, I they are just there to be having casual sex. They are, and they also will say they want a relationship yep. in their profile. Yeah. Oh, wow. Because it, it just widens the amount of people that will like them. So how do you avoid that? Someone who is douchey and a player will not like the question, like, so tell me about your last relationship. Yeah. What did you learn? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They will hate that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they'll say, they'll say, oh God, really, you're moving fast. Like, this is not appropriate for first date banter. <laughs> they will. And like yeah. you, and what I see is people will then mirror and match. So like, oh, if they if they don't want to go deep, I can talk about football. Cool. Mm. So it's like, no, 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 no. This is about standing your ground. Yeah. Yeah. Holding that vision. And now you can see that, ooh, someone, I can see maybe he's just not my guy. He's not ready. Or- yeah. I remember I was on a date with a guy in Laguna Beach when I was living in California and just to set the scene for everyone. And he wanted to go back to his place after the first date, mm-hmm. oh, right? God, no. And first of all, I just felt like I'd met him online. It felt a little scary to yeah. me to be in like a Literally. private, non-public space with him. But I, it was kind of cold outside. And so I was just like, okay, we can go back to your place. But just so you know, like, I'm not having sex with you. And like, I was like, honestly, if we were to have sex, it would be like months from now. Like, I just met you. That's not going to happen. I really like want to like adore someone and have it be like really real for me. And he just started laughing. Like that idea to him was unfathomable. And so I was like, all right, well, I'm not going to your house anymore. Like he tried to paper over it and still clearly aren't even like respecting my answer. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, that is such I'm so glad you told that story because women need permission. Like 
it is okay to draw that boundary yeah. early on. Right. And I coach people to say, like, listen, I like to move slow. Yeah. 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 And I like to really bond sort of emotionally. So I don't know if we're aligned. Yeah. It's just crazy, though, because I also did the same thing with a different guy. And he was like, totally get it. Totally fine. We walked to his place and then he aggressively physically came on to me like the most aggressively anyone ever has. And I left and I think I was like, he thought that was a game. Like he thought. I'm going to win you over. I'm the or he thought mouse. I was saying like, well, it's not going to happen, you know, like in a fun way. Wow. And I think it can be really difficult because you want to be authentic. But unfortunately, I think some men, maybe they just have like watched too much porn or they are so detached from the reality of a woman's mm -hmm. psyche that they don't realize like, no, we actually, I have no interest in yeah. doing that. Yeah. Well, I have really lovely male clients and I have to coach them. They're lovely, but they're playing a game too. Yeah. yeah. And so I have to dial them back yep. and mm. ask, have them ask the woman, like, are you comfortable with this? Yeah. Yeah. I, I'd love on my, on our third date, I'd love to cook you dinner at my place, but just yeah. FYI, yeah. there's no funny business. Mm -hmm. I'm just letting you know yeah. that I want to spend time with you. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it goes both ways. Yeah. Okay, let's get to another question. While you pull that up, I'll just tell like a quick story about meeting my husband was on our third date, we were in the car and he was dropping me off and he asked to kiss me. And it was just Aww. like the most respectful, sweet way. And again, it's not this like crazy chemistry, like we're just ripping each other's clothes off, you know, can't bear to be apart right when we meet. But it, it's just like, it's interesting how the right person It'll just be such a different experience. It'll be different and it'll be warm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You'll feel safe. safe. Yeah. A lot of times we misread that as, oh gosh, it's, there are no sparks. Yeah. I hear that a lot. No right. sparks. Do you feel, Lauren, that your relationship, like the chemistry just kept building? Yeah. It was funny. I feel like the chemistry at two months in kind of exploded mm -hmm. and it was that crazy chemistry that honeymoon experience, but it took like two months to get there. I love this. I cannot yeah. even take it. This is so, that's real and that's yeah. sustainable. Mm -hmm. yep. Like there's statistics that real chemistry between two people only lasts two to two and a half years, mm. or it might even be just two years, 18 months to two years. And if you build chemistry in the reverse way, it can last a lifetime. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Really building that foundation. Right. And I've seen it. I've really seen it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So a question I have for you from our listeners is, can long distance really work? This person says, I met an amazing guy in New York for three months. We are trying, but can it work? Okay. I get this a lot. I think long distance relationships are really hard. I think that relationships yeah. are hard enough. So if yeah. you're adding in long distance, the only way I've seen it work is where both people are emotionally mature you can sit out and map out, even if it's two weeks in advance, mm -hmm. and say, listen, can we do a FaceTime? Can we? And you're asking the question sooner than you would. Yeah. Like, listen, let's game out your life. What are you doing in three years? Who are you with? Yeah. And if they're not saying, oh, gosh, I mean, I hope I'm with my wife. I hope I... Or if they're scared of it. Yeah. You just have to know. It's just they have to commit to and up their communication game. Yeah. I felt like with with our long distance relationship, which we did for the first seven months, I could not handle any game playing. And there was no game playing because, it, you know, it's like we're not seeing each other all the time. I don't want to mm -hmm. be with someone. I'm, I'm not going to bother texting someone across the country if they're going to, you know, wait an extra long time to text me back. So there was right. no game playing. And that was a really strong indicator of me of like, oh, he's emotionally available. He's like ready for this relationship. And also, I think, I guess, you know, to also answer this person's question from my experience, I think trying to see each other as often as possible to keep yeah. that spark alive because it can be hard. And you'll know if yeah. someone's like suddenly very, very busy. Mm -hmm. It's like they're just not, they're not going to be ready. But I think we don't get ahead of it. We yeah. need to get ahead of it. Yeah. Do you have different advice for, because I see like I'm 33, what's your advice? I'm 42, what's your advice? Do you have different advice for people of different ages or do you, does it really kind of, is it all the kind of the same, would you say? It's all kind of the same. Yeah. You know, obviously like that, 30 something. I have so many of my egg freezers who I love so much. And the clock is very real. The yeah. stress is very real. But we have to peel away that. And we have to, again, you you don't want to just grab someone to grab them. Yeah. Right. You will regret it. I see it. So you have to know what your priority is. I just, I, I often will help clients. Like one just yesterday, she decided, I'm going to have that baby. 
Mm. I'm going to do it. Yeah. And it's beautiful. You yeah. Know? I've had clients who did that and then met their partner. Yeah. Because they're so fulfilled and happy. So yeah. it's getting clear on what your priorities are and, you know, not being scared and desperate because that is not you're not you're not going to attract the right person yeah something I felt like nervous to say on dates was like talk about wanting a family yeah. I think like when I was dating I was I, I felt like it would make me seem uncool like to somehow like traditional and uncool I don't know like I was just I had all these insecurities about it and I think you know that ended up bringing me to the wrong men and that's why asking that question like three years from now yeah what are you doing who are you with yeah because you have to answer it. Yep. So yeah. You have to practice. It's really good practice. That's why we go on practice dates all the time. It's like, it's scary if you haven't done that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know what? I actually do want a family and sooner rather than later. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Going back to dating in your 30s, I kind of almost feel like dating in your 30s is harder than in your 40s, most likely, because, or for if you're dating post divorce or post having children, I feel like that's easier than dating in your 30s or 40s when you haven't done that yet because it's almost like I don't know if this was your experience when you were dating you're like you're not thinking okay I need to have a family I need I'm along this clock I need things to move super quickly it's like the pressure goes off again you know or the the pressure what is the phrase Chandler what should I fish fish or cut bait was that (laughs) (laughs) there's just less pressure you know when that part of your life is already kind of figured out Mm -hmm. oh absolutely I couldn't agree more when you are doing love a second time around, it's beautiful because you're looking for someone who is willing to prioritize the relationship above yeah. all. Mm-hmm. And that's between us with Brett. It's so funny. We love, I mean, when he talked about his daughters on an early date that I fell a little bit more for him because he just lit up. But our joke, I mean, we have five grown kids between us and our joke is sort of like, eh, it's all about us. <laughs> <laughs> You know, like we'll drop anything yeah. to help any of our children at any time. But even they know, mm-hmm. like it's their time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're going on that trip. Or yeah, they're right. Doing their thing. Or someone sort of along those lines has asked how to keep the spice alive after ten years plus together. Yeah, that's a really really good question. I think the biggest way to do that is to I think you can spend a lifetime being curious about your partner. Yeah, mm. yeah. I think we stop getting curious. Yeah, like, yeah. That's a really big principle that I coach to mm-hmm. is it's all about curiosity. Mm-hmm. We're so obsessed with with giving the right answer that we forget to be curious. Yeah. And so if you are constantly curious, it just keeps everything alive. Yeah. 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 You know, I love that. You'll always have something to learn. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like Brett was sort of getting emotional the other day. We were talking about something about his daughter and I was like, what is making you emotional? And then I learned something about mm-hmm. him that I hadn't learned before. Yeah. So it's just you know, curiosity. Yeah, absolutely. That's so lovely. We got a bunch of questions that are like, I have kids. How should I approach this? And so I feel like it would just be great if you could speak to, you know, trying to date when you are a single mom. Yeah, it's really hard. Yeah, it's really hard. I think you do have to prioritize it. Yeah. You have to block it out. You have to get a sitter or even if it's just every two weeks, you're going on a mini screener. By the way, we love chivalry so much. The person's coming to you, mm-hmm. to your neighborhood. You're not getting the car and driving 45 minutes. So it should be doable. Mm-hmm. But you have to prioritize it. I think as a single mom, it's really tough because you think that everything has to be about the kids all the time. Yeah. But what are you modeling for them? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What are you modeling for them? You want them to see you fulfilled and happy and yeah. going after your dreams. So that's the best way. Yeah. So do you lead with that on your profile? Like, how do you share that information? Yeah, it's a great question. What I like to do is one of the prompts is my simple pleasures. And that's when you can get really specific about who you are and what Mm -hmm. you like. And one of your simple pleasures can be my two sparkly kids. Yeah. 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 Two amazing kids. Yeah. So you're you're tossing it in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you're not saying, we'll only date men, you know, with kids. I have kids. Right. You know. Yeah. And I, I think that, like... One of the things I have thought a lot about is like as dating becomes less optimal or you just kind of have, you know, more constraints, maybe you have kids, maybe you're dating at a different season in life. You're just going to select for on some level like better men, like men who are open to, you know, being a great stepdad. You are going to say like you're going to have more frogs on some level to bypass and to unmatch with. But you also are going to meet like amazing people. Oh, my gosh. I cannot tell you how many clients I have who even clients who don't have kids and they ended up marrying someone with a Mm six-year-old and now they're pregnant with 
men who have been through some stuff, especially fatherhood, yeah. they can be the best partners. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Really. It's it's really beautiful to see. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so another question in a little bit of a different vein is how long to wait for your boyfriend to say I love you? This person says, I will not say it first, but I do think he loves me. Yeah. So I think when we talk about emotional maturity, part of that is emotional availability. Mm-hmm. Someone can be emotionally mature, but they're not able to voice it. And so one of the guys I dated right after I got divorced was a lovely person, but he grew up in a household where they never said, I love you. Yeah. It was impossible to, poor guy. He was all bottled up, but it wasn't going to work for me. Yeah. So I think it's okay to say, I love you first. If you're sitting there obsessing about it, that's not the energy you want in that relationship. Mm -hmm. So you can baby step it and say, listen, my feelings for you are really growing. And I wonder if we're on the same page. Yeah. Can we talk about it? Because I just feel like I'm really falling for you. Mm -hmm. And we really, I'm not sure how you feel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'll say as a, as an, I love you first success story. I mean, I, I accidentally said it like a month in and that was like, then I was like crying anyway. But then I like, then I accidentally said it like a couple months later. I think I love you for me was something I grew up in a household. Everyone said, I, I say it to new friends. Like it it was a very comfortable expression for me. And I think for, for Ben, it was not, it was honestly a bigger deal to him than it was to me a little bit. And I think that was like, I had to like respect that and be like, okay, like to him, you know, he said like saying, I love you was basically like, I'm ready to like, you know, have you be my partner. Like it was a very yes. big step for him. And I was like, what? It's not like that for me. <laughs> but that's but a yeah. good point. It's different for everybody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Most people that I see saying I love you is a pretty big deal. Yeah. And it comes right around exclusivity or after yeah. mm-hmm. you become exclusive. Mm-hmm. But I think the emotional openness is something, it can be a flag. So you have to yeah. be careful about that. Yeah. yeah. When is the right moment to say... To have the define the relationship talk. Yeah. When you want. When you want. When okay. You want. But what if, like, you want to do that immediately? <laughs> <laughs> right. So you shouldn't do that. <laughs> right? You shouldn't do that. Here's the deal. Women especially play the tape. We all play the tape. We're on the second date. We're literally checking all the boxes. We're naming our kids. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we've got to slow it down. Yeah. You don't know this person yet. Yeah. That's why my four pillars are really important. So... You have to have the four pillars before you can even consider committing to this person. It's like the four pillars of a house. It's like a foundation. So it's chemistry, which can build over time, Mm -hmm. core value alignment, right? So know what you stand for and ask questions, emotional maturity, and then readiness. So if you're asking the right questions, you're checking these boxes. But I'll have clients all the time say like, oh no, like he said he wants to take me to a wedding and he was telling me about his mom. And I think, yeah, he's totally ready. Right. He's not. Yeah. Or we don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. can say I love you and not be ready. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've seen that too. So yeah. we just have to normalize asking these questions. Yeah. 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 No, Amy, I'm so grateful for coming on the show Yay. because I, again, hearing what you're saying, it's actual insights to go off of. Mm-hmm. It's actionable advice yes. versus stuff that's just very, I think, shallow or vague. And I do think dating, it's really a practice. It's something you have to do. You have to put one foot in front of the other. It's work and people need help as they're doing it. So I would love for you to share. Well, first of all, you're going to share with our listeners a list of questions, right? For them to ask on dates. Yeah. Okay. Just for you guys and for your listeners. So just DM me on Instagram and I'll send you that. And you can find me on loveamy.co. All my information is there. And your Instagram handle is? Love.amy.nyc. Love talking about NYC. Also, I just have to say, you have such like a hopeful and like a generous approach, I think, to dating that is like, I don't know, I just find it to be really like not, obviously it's not cynical. And I think like so much of like the talk about it is cynical these days. And anyway, I feel more hopeful for like life and for my single friends. And so, oh, that's anyway. so sweet to say. I Wonderful. really do believe I'm super spiritual. My clients know I'm like witchy and weird. I can feel it. I can feel it. <laughs> I know. I feel like we need to do another episode on that. I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. I can go deep. I see dead people sometimes in client sessions. Oh really? Like they're like, grandmother who passed away is on the journey with us wow. and sending signs. I have like the chills. I know. I love it. That's Wonderful. my favorite thing in the world. But I do believe, I really do, like at the end of the day and at the end of our short, short lives, it's all about love. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like it's pretty simple. So there's no time to waste, you know, just be yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Thank you for joining us. Truly. Thank you so much. Um, All right. right. We'll be back on Friday for our our premium premium listeners. (laughs) 
getting used to that. Love you guys. Thank you so much for listening. Thanks again, Amy. And we'll be back. Bye. Bye. Bye.